So cross compiling temporary tools. This shows how to compile cross compile the basic utilities building uh, using the just built cross tool chain. These utilities are installed into their final location but cannot be used yet. Basic tasks still rely on the host tools. Nevertheless, the installed libraries are used when linking. So using the utilities will be possible in the next chapter after entering the truth environment, but all the packages built in the present chapter need to be built before we do that. Therefore, we cannot be independent of the host system yet. So the further work we're doing is to enable us to be independent of the host system. Once again, let us recall that improper settings of LFS together with building as root may render your computer unusable. The whole chapter must be done as LFS user with the environment as described in setting up the environment. So we haven't logged out of LFS user. So that's okay. We're still obviously the LFS user, as you can see by the prompt. And again, we can check with ID to prove the user ID is LFS. And again, we can double check that LFS is set and it is. So we're not going to mess up the host system. Okay, so we can proceed now with the first package, which is M4. So extract M4, change into it, and you'll find a lot of these instructions are quite similar. So they do get a bit repetitive at this stage, some of them. So let's build that and install it. So that's done nice and quick. Tidy up and we're at the bottom. We can move on to end curses. So once again, we extract the package we're dealing with end curses. And then we change into it and we can start following the instructions make one alteration then run the following commands to build a tick program on the build host so this isn't going to be part of LFS or the temporary LFS We're building this for the host system so make a directory we change into it temporarily we'll configure it It looks like we make some libraries or some include files and then we build a progs project and then the tick program itself and that's done. So I guess somewhere we'll help we'll have the tick program. Yeah there it is in under progs. So now we do pop D to go back to the root of the source directory and we can build or we'll start building NCurses properly by configuring it. And then building it. And then we install the packages. You can see that we use the tick program we just built here as part of the installation instructions. So I guess something in install must need to use tick and the tick where the location of it is specified with this variable tick path. So let's run that now. Oh, pressed enter too quickly there. Okay, that's worked. Now we've got this set command, which is split over two lines, and that's complete. 
and there's the explanation there about that tick program that's built as well as the rest of the um, options that were added in so that's end curse is complete and remember these are only temporary tools we're building so we'll be building these again but with different instructions because those instructions will pertain to the final installation not this temporary installation so now we move on to bash extract it change into it and then run the configure command for it Double click now. So make to build it, and that's done. Now we're going to install. And we make a sim link so that SH exists for the system, which is essential for some programs. And we're done with bash. We want to call utils. So call utils, and again we start off with a configure command. And we'll compile it with make. And install it. And then we've got several commands here to relocate some of the binaries into um, their, as it says, their final expected locations. So this might be uh, for various reasons, but it says here, although it's not necessary in this temporary environment, we must do so because some programs hard code executable locations. So that's quite an important thing to take note of. So that's that done, and that's call cool utils done. Move on to diff utils next. And again, this looks similar to the original M4 build instructions. As I said, there's some that either are very similar or identical uh, in terms of the instructions to compile and install them. And that's Defutil's done. Next we've got file. So we need to create a file command that the host can use. So it looks, looks similar to the ncurses procedure where we build a, a single binary first to be used by the installation or the compilation. So we've just created a build directory, we've temporarily changed into that directory. We're now going to run configure with lots of options disabled. So it's building a minimal file. So let's see if we can see that. Uh, can't see it there, so let's find it. There it is there, so that'll be the binary, I imagine, that file under source. Yep, it is. So now let's run pop D to go back to where we were, and we can carry on with building the package properly for our temporary system. And 
and it looks like in this case it's the file that we just created is used <clears throat> for compilation as opposed to installation as it was with NCurses. So that's done, let's install it. And again, remove a libtool archive file, which could be harmful. So remove file and move on to find utils. So start off with a configure command. <clears throat> and build a package with make and finally install it and that's done next we've got gawk first in short some unneeded files are not installed so there's a set command to do that then we've got a configure command And we'll build the package and install it. And that's done. Now move on to grep. And again, configure. build it and install the package and it's complete gzip next so, oh, did that I think that Yes, it did. Uh, I've got a problem with mouse, but it looks like it's tight double clicking. So, what I'm going to do is to tidy this up, extract it again, and start from the beginning. Because uh, it looks like it took that host name as part of the repeated command name, uh, which would have broken things. Okay, that's configured, so I'm going to compile the package now, and it's done. Install it, and that's all complete. Move on to make. Configure. Oh, it's done it again. Right, I might have to pause and change my mouse. Right, that's done. So let's build it and install it. That's done.
Next we've got patch. So that's configuring. Build it and install it. And it's patch complete. Move on to said. Configure it. Build it and install. Tar next. And again, I think these last few packages have had identical build instructions. So let's now build tar. And install it. And tidy up. And move on to XZ. So slightly different configure command now. Build it. Install. And finally we've got a libtool archive to remove again. And that's like I said, done. So now we move on to the second installation of bin utils. So first thing we need to do is to put this set command in for a fix for an inconsistency. And then create a build directory and change into it. And then configure the package for building. and build it, let's see how long it takes this time. It'll probably be a little bit longer, I imagine. And that's done, so let's install the package. And then again, we've got some libtool archives to remove and some static libraries as well that need to be removed. And that's all that done. So back to sources, remove bin utils, and move on to the second pass of GCC. I'll extract it, 
change into it. And once again, we'll do these commands here to extract these other packages that GCC needs. And I think we did this before. Change the name of the directory on 64 bit machines. Override building rule, the building rule of, -lib, of lib GCC and lib standard C headers to allow these building these libraries with POSIX thread support. Create a separate build. Change into that build directory. And it says before starting to build GCC, remember to unset any environment variables that override the default optimization flags. So I haven't set any. Um, if you have, it's obviously a recommendation not to have them set. Oh dear. So that's done. So let's time the build command, which is make and wait for this to complete.
Okay, so that's finished. It's a little bit longer than last time. Five, just almost six minutes. So now let's install the package. And lastly, create a sim link to CC, which allows any compiler to be set via the CC link. And that's it. So let's tidy up and move on to entering truth and building temporary additional tools.